Yo, subscribe to Phenoboxing right now or else. Ba -ba -ba. <laughs> or to, to the fight. Um, uh, have you seen much of, of James Tennyson in the past? Yeah, yeah. I've watched him for, for a while, actually. I've seen, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just, just probably when he was coming up a bit, just used to follow the box track kind of around the world. So I, I paid attention to him then, but seeing some of his older fights, I was, uh, I like the way he fights. It's a fun guy to watch. Yeah, um, he's been he's been stopped three times, but but uh, since he moved up to lightweight, he's looked uh, you know extremely good. You know, um, you're a you're a career lightweight. I mean, do, will that have a big factor in in the fight? Do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. He's a strong kid, right? I might be a bigger guy than him, um, but uh, definitely, like he's got the power in it. So uh, I don't know how much. I'm not a massive lightweight. I don't think so. I don't know how much it'll it affect. Fight. We both got to make one thirty-five, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, obviously, you mentioned his power. He's a he's a terrific hitter. Um, how do you how do you sort of avoid uh, getting on the end of um of some of his big shots on Friday night? Just got to be sharp and turned on. Um, you know, he, uh, he the, the the thing is, he he really likes guys to sit in front of him, so you got to keep him off balance a little bit, and um. You know, a little bit of lateral movement. Like guys have done really, really well with him in parts, but but they, a lot of them exert too much energy where he kind of catches up with them in the long haul, right? Um, I thought Gavin Gwynn did a good job too, and you know he, he would close distance so that he couldn't punch. Sometimes you got to kind of mix it up though. A little bit of lateral movement and a little bit of just you know taking away space. So you've got to stay in your toes in and, and box clever against them. Definitely, yeah. At points, at, at point, there's going to be points in the fight too where, where you know, you definitely need to get the guy's respect where he doesn't need to just keep coming in. You know what I mean? You got to get that respect there. So um, I, that's, that's uh, the plan is early to not get caught up in anything crazy and then pick my shot so that he can slow down as the fight goes on. But can I just ask finally, um, obviously you've, you've got an Irish team. What are, what are your Irish roots? Uh, yeah, my grandfather was from, uh, his, his grandfather was from Ireland. We don't really know a whole lot about where we're from or nothing. My grandfather's dad died when he was very young and, um, there was not really a whole lot. We've tried to look into it before, but not, uh, not a whole lot of, um, knowledge about it. Mm -hmm. But it's always obviously something you've been aware of, like, throughout your life? Yeah, and, and, you know, I, I had a chance to travel down to, um, Cavan when I was younger and I got to train there for a bit and I got a lot of friends there and stuff so I feel like I have a lot of connections over there that I'm you know friends with and stuff now but I wouldn't know where my family and all that would come about his family I mean you mentioned Calvin more about some Calvin who did you train with I trained with Brian McEwen Calvin Boxing Club all right and how come you picked Calvin like I'd fought um I'd fought John Joe Nevin as a as an amateur and I I really shouldn't have been in the ring with him. I only had maybe, you know, 20 amateur fights. And, um, but they, my coach had asked me if I wanted to go on a boxing trip. And uh, he's like, ah, there's just one issue. You know, you got to fight this kid. He's just coming off the Olympics. And I was just kind of like, ah, fuck it, man, let's go. And, you know, uh, I think the coach took a liking to that and just that I, that I had some balls and, um, you know, no one, I guess, in the area would really fight him at the time. So, uh, the coach said, come on down to Kevin, you know, we'll make you a champion, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I had, uh, had a really good time there and the training was way different from home and um, it was a really good experience for me. Brilliant. I better let you go. Thanks very much. Best of luck for Freddie and Josh. Thank Cheers. you, man. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. You can go to Ryan from Boxing Social, please. Hi, Josh. How are you? Good, man. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you for asking. Uh, I just was hoping we'd get a little bit more background on yourself for the UK fans since you've came over here. I was just hoping yeah. you could tell us a bit about how you actually got into the box, boxing in the first place. What first took you down at that gym? Uh, to a boxing gym? Well, I was, uh, I was a bit of a scrappy kid anyways. I was getting in fights a lot as a little kid and um, I was always pretty good at sports. And, uh, you know, but I just found as I was getting older, I was one of these little... Uh, one of these little dweebs and I, you know basketball was my sport uh, basketball and hockey but I was a really small kid so it was hard to compete with some of the guys who were a lot bigger I wanted to do a sport that was um you know weight based or size based and went into the boxing gym there were a few kids from my hockey team that were boxers and they were doing well and I went and I trained with their dad and then 
next thing you know, I, I just stuck with it. You mentioned that you tried other sports. How quickly did boxing go from becoming a hobby and something you were trying out with your other friends around to this could be a career choice for yourself? Um, yeah, I mean, it was weird. I remember my first boxing match, I was actually just fighting a kid from school who's one of my buddies. We set up a little tournament in his backyard and I was the smallest kid there and I'd won the tournament. And I was just thinking in my head, like, oh, I could do this. I could do this all right. So, uh, you know, um, I remember my first time in the gym. Like, I already had ambitions as a young kid to turn pro, with, I think, before I even – because that's what you see on TV, right? It was never to go to the Olympics or anything. It was always to turn pro. Um, yeah, that's, that's it, really. I believe this is your first time fighting outside of Canada as a professional. I was just wondering yeah. if you could tell us a bit how you find the whole bubble experience being over in the UK as well. Um, I, I kind of like it, to be honest. I think it's a lot easier. The, uh, the food here is amazing. Um, they're taking really good care of us. And um, you know, I just find for back home, there's a lot of stuff in terms of selling tickets and running around with your head cut off to, to push tickets and whatnot. So it's a little bit less stressful. Um, you know, you can just kind of focus on the fight, do your training and focus on making weight and that's it. How big an incentive is it for you that this is a WBA eliminator? And what has the reception been like back home as well when this fight got announced? Back home, it's been huge. You know, um, there's not many big fights going on in general. Right? There's no fights going on back home in general. So um, to get to get this fight is, uh, you know, obviously the biggest opportunity I've had in my career. It's uh, It's been massive. And I've, I've got so much, uh, you know, where I'm from is not a, a big boxing scene. So, you know, I'm, I'm really surprised by the amount of... Um, how much support and stuff I've been getting from people. All right, Josh, I'll pass you on to the other guys. Thank you for your time and good luck. Awesome. Yeah, thank you, man. Thanks, Ryan. Um, if anyone else has any questions for Josh, just drop me a message or raise the, the hand icon. I've seen the boxing source has a question there, so I'm going to pass over. All right. Um, given that you were talking about the past fights that – um, you know, Tennyson has had. Have you been able to check out the Tevin Farmer fight and kind of like see something in that that, you know, you would want to take notes on? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I've, I've watched the Tevin Farmer fight and, you know, obviously me and Tevin Farmer are quite different. He's he's quite short, southpaw, very different styles. Um, Tevin Farmer would be a nightmare to fight uh, style-wise, you know what I mean? So I think that was a really bad matchup just for James in general, where it's a different fight entirely. But there's things you see. And, um, yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot I can take away from all of his fights. And, uh, you know, it's just always different, the guy in front of you. So it'll be, you know, there's a lot of things I see from the outside that could look different when you're in there. And there's a lot of things he sees from the outside that might look different to him when he's in there. So let's just kind of see how it plays out when we're in there. Now, given that you were, you know, fighting around the 140-pound division, how comfortable do you feel right now coming into this particular fight? The other, the other part about that is that in, in Ontario, we have same-day weigh-ins. Um, so, so if I'm fighting for, for a title, I'd get to weigh in the day before, but I'd still have a same-day weigh-in. So, um, you know, a lot of the times I was fighting heavier because we don't have a day before. I feel quite comfortable. This is probably the best, easiest I've made weight in a really long time. Um, and I like the fact that I'm not going to have that same-day weigh-in. So I, I'll just be able to, you know, fully hydrate at night, good meals all day. Um, you know, it'll be nice. Thank you very much, Josh. Thank you, man.